The world is increasingly interdependent. Global interactions among businesses and people are on the rise. International agreements ensure that these interactions play out in accordance with rules. Together they form a rich tapestry of global rules. They provide the basis for innovation, opportunity, cooperation, as well as economic success and prosperity. They affect each of us every single day. And yet there remained a significant gap in this tapestry, a global treaty crucial to international trade, commerce and investment. A global treaty that since the 1850s had been the vision of one man, Tobias Asser. Tobias Asser, a Dutch uh, statesman, politician, lawyer, um, who was really the driving force, the main driving force behind uh, the first conference uh, of the Hague Conference on Private and National Law, which took place in 1893. So clearly Tobias also was a visionary because he had envisaged all of that, the need to provide a legal framework that would uh, facilitate cross-border trade uh, and take into account you know, the movement of people and the more and more international character of the society uh, in which we are living. In 1862, as part of his inaugural address as newly appointed professor, Asser made this point. Truly fortunate is the nation which sets itself the goal of finding the means to improve all in its current legislation that still hampers trade, and does so with the intent of seeing accepted the principle of mutual recognition of judgments. He foresaw the benefits to be gained from a simple, efficient and predictable framework that supports the domestic recognition and enforcement of foreign judgments, a more reliable judicial infrastructure that supports international transactioning a framework that would raise the level of certainty in the context of international trade, commerce and investment. In the summer of 2019, more than 400 delegates gathered in The Hague, the city of peace and justice, to fulfil Tobias Asser's vision and close the significant gap. The 2019 HCCH Judgments Convention. And so here we are, June, July 2019, finalising this uh, convention. The convention has been a long time in the making, uh, I would say yes and no. Agreements like this don't happen very often and they don't materialise out of thin air. This specific convention uh, had its origins about seven years ago with an expert group that I chaired. And we've gone over and over it, we've explored the issues, we've crafted some text. I think that we've done the hard preparation work to make that possible. These were very intense um, discussions during the day. Some provisions were rather contentious and uh, people spoke their minds. People uh, tried to accommodate others' uh, views. As uh, the Secretary General mentioned, it was uh, important to know that people wanted to cooperate with each other uh, and that it was inclusive. It is a, a process that goes in, in several directions at, at the same time. The plenary discussion where you have the assessment of the general views of states and members of the conference, legal opinions were expressed freely, but then you have to work on texts. And texts have to be uh, crafted by states, by participants, and also the drafting committee. I am absolutely delighted and grateful to all uh, states and experts involved that uh, we are about to finalize uh, this convention, to adopt this important convention, and to fill a really important practical gap that has uh, existed uh, until now. The gap was filled on 2nd July 2019, when the 22nd diplomatic session of the HCCH adopted the 2019 HCCH Judgments Convention. As envisaged by ASA, the new Judgments Convention will strengthen certainty and the predictability in international transactioning, who will provide parties with the important ability to make informed strategic choices in dispute resolution. The new convention will enhance global access to justice. It will be a game changer in the sense that the world hasn't had such a convention uh, until now and the convention is going to fill a very important gap uh, for uh, the commercial community and commercial uh, operators. The Judgment Convention um, puts together rules to make recognition and enforcement of judgments given by one uh, state 
to be recognized in another state. So this is going to be a great tool, very useful tool for access to justice so that a person who brings a suit in one state does not have to bring another suit in another state just to enforce the judgment. Well, when it enters uh, into force, it will do is to provide a tool for uh, parties, for litigants, to select the best, uh, I would say, strategy, legal strategy, to pursue certain uh, goals according to law and to have a respected common legal framework if the case arises in which one of the litigants has to uh, pursue that, the, the enforcement of a judgment abroad for several reasons, because the, the assets or the person is abroad. Help people make informed decisions about where to litigate in the first place. So the convention doesn't have any rules about where you can litigate, but what it does is say, well, what courts are appropriate? Which contracting states are appropriate contracting states in which to bring your claim? With the result, the judgment will be recognised and enforced somewhere else. But the new convention will not only help people to decide whether and where to litigate, it will also offer them more choice concerning the dispute resolution mechanism to use. And the 2019 Judgments Convention will allow parties to predict whether their judgment, obtained in one state, will be enforceable under the laws of another state, as under convention, legal systems will become more open. So it makes the law more accessible at a number of points. First of all, this convention will enable you or your lawyers to work out pretty quickly which countries it will be easy to enforce in. Then roll forward <laughs> to the time when you've got your judgment. Uh, so what it does is make it easier to find out where else you can recognise and enforce. You look to one instrument which is accessible in your country rather than lots of different national laws in each other state. And you can figure out what the conditions are for recognition and enforcement, work out whether you meet them or not, and then it will make that process simpler and faster. At the moment, there's a huge range of different processes in different countries. Some of them, you know, in, in theory, you can get a judgment enforced, but in practice, it's very difficult. This should make it much easier, much faster. And, as always, when you make things easier and faster in the legal world, cheaper. But the 2019 Judgments Convention will only make a real difference to the costs of cross-border litigation if the Convention's rules and mechanisms are available to a large number of international actors. And so the HCCH's work did not end on 2nd of July 2019 with the formal adoption of a new treaty. My main wish is that it is widely ratified and that that happens fast. So fast for an international convention doesn't mean overnight. Doesn't maybe even mean one year, but I would like to think that five years out from signing, we would have a significant number of states that are parties to this. A quick entry into force of the convention and uh, a wish that uh, the number of these ratifications uh, would uh, increase rapidly, that the convention has a quick impact uh, on, uh, on the global uh, scene. This quick impact is essential for those for whom the HCCH created the convention, for people and businesses around the globe. In 2019, the HCCH gave the world a global treaty that facilitates the recognition and enforcement of judgments internationally. The HCCH Judgments Convention is a game changer for cross-border dispute resolution. It promotes rule-based international trade. It enables foreign investment. It facilitates mobility. This treaty is an apex stone in the quest for global access to justice. 157 years after Tobias Asser's inaugural address, his vision came true. HCCH, to connect, to protect, to cooperate, since 1893.